Hey guys, it's C.S. Joseph with C.S. Joseph Life. Do another episode for season 22. This is uh, season 22, um, episode 15. What are the cognitive transitions of INTPs? INTPs also known as the uh, ardent uh, type, or by traditional standards, the engineer type. Um, they're uh, pretty behind the scenes, background-ish. Informative, responding, control, also known as outcome, very outcome focused. And uh, these are one of the two types that seem to be noticed the least among uh, people. It's kind of interesting because uh, I um, recently lost my vehicle and so I had to get another one. And uh, so I had to make arrangements with that and lo and behold I was... My, my uh, salesman that assisted me in that situation was an INTP. And uh, as INTPs go, you know, INTPs are pretty cute. So he was being all cute, and I think that's his, uh, I guess, his uh, his sales strategy or his sales approach. Not sure how the sound's going to work out on this video. It's actually pissing rain right now, and I'm just going on a walk outside and enjoying myself. Got my little fuzzy microphone, wind is blowing, it's raining, might see some lightning. I hope I see some lightning, but regardless of the matter, um, it'll be a fun lecture. I like filming in the rain. Most people think I'm crazy for doing it, as well as filming in the wind, but exposing my introverted sensing into the elements is a way to calm me such that I can maintain the focus uh, to actually do a video like this. Which, by the way, I know I haven't been around much recently. Um, I've been very sick, extremely sick, and uh, also spending a lot of time reading and self-reflecting uh, consistently on that. And it's just kind of been, it's just kind of been a thing for me. Um, I don't know how else to um, to really explain that. So, ooh, it's coming down real hard. It's coming hard down like that. I think I need to find myself a, a bench. Hopefully I can find one while I'm lecturing here. So, anyway, folks, um, calling the transitions. So why, I, you know, I, at the beginning of these lectures, I always do like some kind of introduction because you know how it is. People only watch videos based on their own types. They don't bother watching the other lecturers on other types. So I always end up starting the lectures with, you know, the pertinent information as a foundation to that end. And because, you know, human beings were naturally selfish, so we only really want to hear about things that pertain to us and not really anybody else. I get it. It's just, you know, the way of things. Um, but I do actually recommend you folks kind of branch out and look at other types and the perspectives of other types because if you don't, you're at risk of being ignorant and you might want to consider that you really I seriously could you should consider that because you have to understand that every lecture that I do is actually a part of a grand um, narrative and based on this narrative oftentimes people just aren't really so aware of that you know they, they don't understand like there's a bigger message or a, a hidden message behind, you know, things that I do or, you know, how I contribute to the community. So, cognitive transitions. Why are cognitive transitions important? It's important because cognitive transitioning is how you develop neural pathways, basically. Uh, and, you know, given how INTPs are so habitual, it's especially important to INTPs to really practice their cognitive transitions because a force of habit really comes down to whether or not your neural pathways are blocked or opened or if they're, if they're uh, slowed down or if they're available. You know, there's so many different ways of looking at it, right? It's always from that point of view. It's always... Um, you know, just just from the perspective of whether or not you know, it's like it's like, oh, are you open-minded? You know, it's like, wait a minute, are your neural pathways open? Right, it's the same kind of thing, you know. And 
A lot of people don't understand that. And because INTPs are such creatures of habit, it's really important to have these neural pathways open. And these neural pathways, where they're located, at least from a Jungian analytical psychology standpoint, is quite frankly, it's, um, rain died down a little bit so I can move around. So it's actually, uh, it's within your cognitive gateways. And the cognitive gateways is your hero function, um, which, you know, when it gets, you know, older or when it's uh, kind of, you know, grown up, etc. Your, uh, you know, it could turn from the hero to a warrior because, you know, you have your immature version of your cognitive attitudes to the mature version of the cognitive attitudes, which I'm going to be doing a bonus episode for season 16 to actually explain that. I was actually talking to an NTP earlier today, and it's so funny because she's telling me about, you know, how she types people using cognitive functions, and I'm like, okay, so how are you keeping track of the immature variants of their functions? Are you keeping track of the mature variants of the functions? Are you, do you realize that there's a range of immature versus mature per function per side of the mind, which means every single function technically has four different ranges of which they could be mature and immature on at, at the same time? Are you keeping track of all that? And if so, how are you able to actually create a system that can accurately detect someone's type just by looking at their cognitive functions? Or are you assuming everyone is equally as immature or equally mature based on their cognitive functions? Or are you further assuming that everyone is just like you and potentially how your functions are manifesting is how someone else is manifesting? You see what I'm saying? There is so many, so many different um, approaches um, to cognitive functions that... And there's so much information, so many vectors that, you know, you yourself has to keep track of, etc. that I honestly don't think anyone's going to be able to do that. This is why I tell people, if you're going to type somebody, use the freaking type grid. That's why it's there, you know. Stop trying to type people by cognitive functions. It doesn't help anybody. It doesn't because it's inaccurate. You don't know what you're doing. You all don't know what you're doing when you think you can type by cognitive functions. The type grid is the real deal you know and it, it is the truth it just really comes down to how well someone can wield the truth that's the issue now for me I mean honestly I got about an 87 percent accuracy with people like personally within my own coaching practice and you know I let them sometimes we do redos but usually when I do redos almost all the time I do redos I come to find out they didn't tell me the whole story or they weren't being real with me or they were on mind-altering substances at the time, you know, during the session, etc., which is a consistent risk, you know, it is what it is, can't really change it, right? Um, for example, a guy initially typed an ESTJ was actually an ESTP, for example, but these things happen, you know, and why is this relevant to INTPs? It's relevant because we need to make sure as NTPs that we have the proper input, Otherwise, we're ignorant. We're at risk of making mistakes. You know, in terms of my live streams where I type people by live stream, for example, honestly, those live streams, which, you know, honestly, I'm probably going to do one as soon as I'm done filming this lecture, but, uh, you know, I'm only about 73% accurate, 73 to 78% accurate, I'd say, in that range um, for typing people. And it's because, you know, it's hard. It's really hard. But it's not going to stop me from verifying and not taking responsibility for it. So, anyway, INTPs, when you're playing with this science, and you're playing with the type grid, don't get caught up in cognitive functions. Do yourself a favor. Make sure you're verifying. Make sure you're accurate. You know, if you're cognitive transitioning properly into your ego, you know, with your TI hero, you know that you could do this. You know that you should do this, right? Gosh, this place is beautiful. Let me show you guys what's behind me right now. If you don't know, that's a, that's a canyon, actually, with a golf course in it. It's pretty awesome. So, and I am uh, next to a blackberry bush, and I'm going to stand in this blackberry bush to kind of avoid the rain a little bit. So, yeah, I kind of like this lecture. It's nice and... Uh, calming and whatnot. 
so yeah, TI Hero. TI Hero is like a really big deal. Um, and, you know, oftentimes, you know, INTPs get accused of being like super arrogant with it. And, I mean, I get it. I'm TI parent. I'm an NTP. TP types often are accused by FI users for being super arrogant and conceited and closed minded, etc. And, you know, I've actually been studying um, a book written by an INTJ um, recently. And, gosh, it was so it was such a painful read for myself because I just got to really see things from the perspective of FITE users in ways that I had never have before. And, you know, he was making fun of binary thinking. He was making fun of logical thinking uh, without and how it's completely irrational and how everyone is like, okay, it's, this is black and white or it's on and off or it is what it is or it's, the, you know, and when he's trying to say we need to realize that our decision making is also a dynamic, you know, and uh, it's not it's not based on statics, you know, and logical thinkers are at risk of thinking in terms of, you know, statics, etc., which can be an issue. So based on that, uh, you know, I was like, OK, that's pretty good. And I was happy to at least notice that, you know, my TE critic does at least think in terms of dynamics and more, you know, and, and not as it's not okay it's not as balanced in terms of like stacks and whatnot but it could get pretty um it could get pretty like i mean obviously it's in favor of the statics let's be honest i do it more often but i at least my te critics developed enough that i can like use you know uh, dynamics based thinking and that's where like for example an example of that would be my work in season four the playlist season four how do intimate relationships actually work, which every single person in this audience needs to watch because very few of you actually do. And it talks about how intimate relationships work, their dynamics, human attraction dynamics, that whole type of that whole type of thing. And, you know, while the theory is as complete as it is within the context it is, if we're gonna take it a little bit out of the context, it's a little incomplete. So reading books, um, you know, like Norm Mr. Nice Guy or all the red pill books, for example, uh, Roll Tomasi, who's actually an INTJ, uh, etc. Getting to know like all of that content just really shows you, you know, from like how irrational a, a TI user actually is. And it's really important to have that input. It just goes to show that no one person can do it all themselves, which is something a TI hero within an INTP needs to figure out. So your cognitive gateways, obviously, TI hero before it becomes like a warrior, you know, TI warrior, which is uh, the um, advanced form of TI hero. TI hero is more of the immature version because it's just a hero. And then you have their expert feeling inferior or the infant before it becomes like like crowned a king when it's like so much when it's no longer an infant and it's fully grown, etc. With all of its uh, divinity and royal power, etc. So with that, that's the second gateway. Third gateway is where the worry is. That's the rationale. This is what causes INTPs to be irrational, as uh, uh, some of these authors like Glover and Tomasi would point out, et cetera, especially in men. Um, and then uh, and then to go beyond that, uh, we have the final gateway, which is the demon function, where a person's hatred uh, versus capacity for love exists. And that's their um, FI demon, basically them making decisions based on their mood, right? And combine that, they can have like their SI child and their demon function, and it becomes the demonic child, and then all of a sudden you have like this insanely stupid form of binging that INTPs end up doing. Like their capacity for binging things is just so ridiculous. Like uh, to the point where it's like, it's not necessarily like debauchery, it's more of like uh, a self-inflicted depravity that provides them with no actual good result because they just sell themselves to this bullshit fantasy land that they just can't get out of within their lives so that they end up what this ends up doing to the INTP is that they end up just committing idolatry over and over and over and that could be with pornography that could be with Netflix that could be with Star Trek online or World of Warcraft it literally is idolatry you know and I'm not, you know, and I, yeah, I'm being a hypocrite because I used to have a pornography addiction when I was in high school. Um, I used to play World of Warcraft for six years, and I was committing idolatry. I was an idolater, and and it's 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 addiction. It's all addiction. I mean, you have talked about dopamine addiction in the past and how it could change your neural pathways, 
and or your cognitive gateways is another way of saying it but um you know cognitive gateways like if you don't if you don't manage your gateways you're going to end up developing negative or chaotic pathways where you're going to have patterns of bad behavior and for INTPs it's this super binging that they do and they just sell their souls to stuff they sell their souls to stories they sell their sto- their souls to souvenirs and uh they just can't they just can't get out of it. I mean, it's like that. Um, it's like that kid who's 30 years old that's still playing with action figures, for example. You know, like, uh, like, uh, like Gundam. You know what I'm saying? Gosh, I loved Gundam when I was a teenager. I like. I mean, Toonami was the dopest in those days. Although I like Iron Blooded Orphans far better. I think that's probably the best Gundam story they've ever done. Uh, definitely like that one for sure. I think it's probably the closest to. Uh, understanding human interaction and human humanity in its current state as we could probably get in terms of fiction but that's another story entirely i recommend it if you ever have the opportunity to actually like you know check that out so anyway uh so you know intps it's like oh yeah hey you know i gotta verify everything but the thing is is that intps don't often like actually verify things like ti users you know at least Ever since I, I married a, a TI parent, you know, and, and my wife, Railgun, I love her dearly. Uh, she She's just really exposed the fact as to how much TI users really, really jump to conclusions. And as much as I, like, call out TE users for jumping to conclusions, it's not so much as they jump to the wrong conclusion. It's that they um, they end up gathering up for themselves the wrong conclusion because the research or... The data that they're working off of is flawed to begin with, right? And that's really the source of their ignorance or one of the sources of their ignorance. But TI users end up taking it a lot further such that TI users can actually become a little bit more hypocritical than a TE user, technically speaking, um, because the TI user is using all of that input, which includes that potential false data from the TE user. And in the verification process, if they're not properly verifying, which very few TI users actually do properly verify, this causes, uh, you know, this causes ignorance. And the ignorance of TI is a thing. If you guys want to learn more about the ignorance of TI, I did a Ruby conference episode on the ignorance of TI where I actually walk you through exactly how ignorant TI can actually get, even though it's like the so-called truth function or the so-called fact function, etc., but TI is still hugely flawed, and we see this all the time in INTPs because they can be insanely irresponsible with their hero function. And when you're cognitive transitioning into your ego, which is the base, it's the it's the it's the default, it's the base transition. Why would you want to transition? Well, again, you transition your mind transitions into one of these four other types in your heads because remember the four sides of the mind of the INTP is the INTP ego, the ESFJ subconscious, the ENTJ shadow, and uh, the ISFP superego. These are the four sides of the mind. And whenever an INTP is confronted, basically with a lot of problems or uh, obstacles in life, pain of life, you know, uh, issues, etc. All these things, you know, end up like causing, you know, a lot of blowback in their lives. And they end up avoiding pain because of which an INTP should never do. An INTP should not avoid pain. Um, by avoiding pain, they're actually increasing their ignorance, but we'll get a little bit more into that later. But uh, from a TI standpoint, like, guys, like, you're given that by default. It's your first gateway. It's your hero function. Remember that the order of the functions develop, okay? Your, your hero function develops first, followed by your child function. Those two function first. Most people think it's the auxiliary function. It's not. The auxiliary function actually, aka the parent function, starts out as a teenager, right? It actually develops last in the ego. And that's a serious problem. It's a serious problem. Uh, Why? Well, it's because, you know, everyone's expecting, you know, their second function to develop. And this is why you have people out there like Dave Superpowers talking about, you know, TI or FE jumpers, you know, because he's showing how cognitive looping exists. Cognitive looping is nothing more than the the hero function and the child function teaming up together, basically, through cognitive teaming, etc. And then they end up making a lot of bad decisions or 
immature decisions. And because men in society, and also women in society, but uh, due to the lack of rite of passage, due to the lack of challenge uh, afforded uh, to men, or at least the mutual respect afforded to men after meeting that challenge, as a result, they find themselves in a situation where they're underdeveloped. It's also due to fatherlessness. And based on that, you end up having a ton of men out there who don't even have their parent function developed. Whereas women, statistically, because they can internalize emotions and feelings and they can, they can actually handle that and, they're, and they have a little bit more neuroplasticity than a man does, technically speaking, that's why women could develop their parent function and they do develop the parent function a lot sooner than men do. And especially because men need external help from other men, for example, to be able to develop their parent function. But if everyone is a bunch of man children, I don't think they're gonna be developing very much anytime soon, right? This presents a huge problem. This presents a very huge problem when it comes to you know, men in Western society especially, but anywhere Westernization is going, feminism is going to follow. Feminism literally is just this thing that's inhibiting men from developing their parent functions, essentially. And men are getting blamed for it when it's not exactly their fault. But it is their responsibility. That's the thing, guys. Like, if you're watching this, you're an INTP, understand that there's this important fact you need to realize. You know, here's the, here's the fact of the situation. You know, just because it's not your fault does not mean it is not your responsibility. The difference between a man-child and a man is that a man-child believes that it's not their responsibility if it's not their fault. The reality of the situation is, is that just because it ain't your fault does not make it not your responsibility. So keep that in mind, guys. Like, it's, it's basic. It's, it's so basic. Just because it ain't your fault does not mean it ain't your responsibility, you know? My father always told me this as a, you know, when I was a little kid. He's like, oh, my fault, your problem. He'd always say that to me all the time. It was the most annoying thing in the world, you know? He'd take a whole bunch of trash and whatnot, and then he'd he'd uh, he'd, uh, he'd throw it on the floor or whatever, and be like, "Okay, oh, no, it's your problem. You get to pick it up, because you were lazy today, so you get to pick it up, and you get to go fix all the trash outside. Go, you know, my fault, your problem, right? The reality of the situation is, he was trying to teach me the concept that just because it's not your fault does not mean it's not your responsibility, and this is something that. T.I. hero needs to understand. And oftentimes, INTPs, because of their extroverted sensing trickster, and uh, they end up becoming so loyal to themselves or loyal to their idols, loyal to their gods that they worship under, you know, like anime, video games, uh, you know, or creature comforts, etc. They become so loyal to their creature comforts that the entire world passes them by, and things that they should be taking responsibility for, they don't. And it's really frustrating. It's really, really frustrating. Not only that, there's even a more negative approach to that. The, the world passes them by that they end up believing that this little reality that they've created for themselves within their own heads is actually the truth versus what's out there. This is why you have a ton of INTPs out there who are Malthusians and uh, surrender to the philosophy of Malthus, such as overpopulation is a problem and we have to solve all overpopulation, when the reality is that that's a lie. That's technically a lie. The Earth is rich and can support billions and billions more people. And statistically, if you look it up, the world's population will start to flatten out around 11 billion anyway. And every organism on the planet Basically, if there's not enough resources, they stop procreating, you know, and it's going to be no different from human, human beings. So everyone needs to stop worrying about that. And honestly, human beings have the technology and the wherewithal to actually solve problems if they wanted to. We literally could create a society of unlimited energy right now. We have the ability. We could, we could literally solve world hunger right now. We have the ability. We could literally have, you know, like, there's so many different things, different ways and different things that we could do if we just, like, actually come together and unite on these things. But we won't because, you know, too many special interests, right? 
I'm not saying just corporate special interests. There's government special interests. There's, you know, people special interests. All sorts of problems, you know, that associate with that at the same time. But a lot of people, a lot of people just don't get that. And you know, and <laughs> INTPs because they're expert in sensing tricks or because they're so unaware of reality around them, they end up thinking with our TI hero that something is completely true, you know, like these BS statistics, you know, then they're not, they're not true. It's like, it's like the plague that's happening right now. The plague is real, but the stats about the plague or surrounding the plague is completely false. They're completely false. And, you know, a lot of people just, they are willing to accept the narrative. And irresponsible INTPs who have not transitioned well enough with their hero function, because their hero is not a warrior, they are nothing but these irresponsible people, you know, because as you develop your neural pathways the right way instead of the chaotic way, the orderly way uh, within your first gateway function, which is your hero function, INTPs, trying to turn into a warrior, you start to realize how important it is for you to verify everything that is told to you. Oftentimes, SI child can take what's being told to them for granted. SI child is at risk of being lazy, such that INTPs end up trusting people what they, what they are told, and then they end up thinking that that's true if they're unwilling to verify, which happens a lot. It happens a lot to especially young INTPs. INTPs that are older, who have been screwed over so many times and remember how many times they've been screwed over with their SI child, they end up verifying everything. Good. The problem is the society then accuses them of being harsh, like way too harsh, which is pretty, which is pretty lame. You know, might be able to, might have a chance to show you guys a waterfall here in a second. Let's see if we can take a look. But the point is, Make sure you guys understand that, like, you have this insane burden of verification. And your third gateway, your nemesis function, because you guys worry so much about whether or not you've researched enough, but and you're so outcome focused, sometimes you make decisions where you're just like, well, I'm not even going to bother researching. This is not really important to me right now. Oh, well, you have SE Trickster, how would you know that, you know? It's like, okay, this might be important to me later. Well, you have NI Critic. That's not really going to work for you. So if it's not really something, if you don't have a gun to your head is my point, then you're not really going to be motivated to care. You're not going to be motivated to really do anything of value with that. I mean, why would you? As an INTP, why would you? It doesn't concern you. Yet you're the second most brilliant type of all of the types. INTP, second most brilliant. But, you know, why should I contribute to anything? How can I contribute to anything? No one wants me. No one feels good about me, so why bother? I'm just going to stick to my Netflix because that's what makes me happy, right? The thing is, though, that's a very hedonistic and a very nihilistic way of viewing life. That's literally just you committing idolatry over and over. Let's see if you guys can see this. Hopefully I don't uh, drop anything. Let's see here. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Nice waterfall behind me. Pretty dope, huh? And let's see if I can go further. Yeah. And that's where it is uh, below. That's a huge drop. That's like instant death. Anyway. Nice uh, cold death where they sleep with the fishes, right? Sleeping with the fishes. On ice, right? As the ENFPs would say. So, yeah. Now I got some people walking by. So, keep that in mind, guys. Like, it, you have to take responsibility with the truth. If you're TI Hero and you have the ability to literally outthink anybody, if you literally have that ability, you're going to want to make sure that you're actually going out of your way to verify exactly what you know. If you're not going to verify what you know, then you're just as ignorant as anyone else. And I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how much you can outthink anyone. If you're not accurate, you're just basically a waste of space. You're a waste of resources. You're not helpful. You're not useful. And frankly, I don't want you in my life. 
no one should want in your life because if you're not willing to take the time and get out of your comfort zone and actually verify what you think is true, that includes your belief system, especially your spiritual beliefs, then you are literally a waste. I'm sorry, INTPs. It's just, that's just the reality of the situation. You need to take full responsibility and verify because that's how you reach your level of responsibility. That's also one of the ways by which people desire you. If you're an INTP out there who's like, oh, you know, I have a crush on this guy, but like he, I'm not sure he wants me, etc. And it's like, okay, well, are you humbling yourself? I mean, because a pretty woman plus a humble woman equals a beautiful woman, which is what men actually want. They want a beautiful woman. Just because you have a fine ass and a nice pair of tits does not make you valuable. It really doesn't. It might make you valuable to a, a, a meathead or, or a man-child who will just use you and then, you know, uh, dump you as soon as he's done with you, move on to the next one that's just like you. But the reality of the situation is, in order for you to actually stay, stay in, you know, a relationship that's meaningful, you know, you have to humble yourselves. But what an INTP out there is humble with their TI hero, especially if you're like a TI hero you know, INTP woman, you know, you're not really desirable. So if you're going to be harsh and critical, like I tell INTPs to definitely consider doing, if you're going to be correcting people, you better be right. Damn it. You better be right. Because if you're not right, you're worthless. And you lack in humility. And if you were with a man, I would tell him to dump you immediately and get away from you. You are not desirable. You are not valuable, okay? That's a problem. But you can change that if you are responsible in verifying everything you know so that you know for a fact that everything that you do is accurate. Because think about this. If you criticize someone, especially in a relationship, if you criticize your man, right? One, it's disrespectful if you're not accurate because then you're basically wasting his time. That's horrible. Not only that, he may end up trusting you and making a decision based on your false information, which will also bite him in the butt, and then he'll have to deal with those consequences, right? And that'll be on you, not him, right? And you'll be blamed for it. Explain to me, how is that desirable? How is that valuable? So you need to understand that you have to verify everything. That's what responsibility is all about for an INTP. That's what it's all about. That's what you need to do. If you're unwilling to do that, well, you're not going to be successful in life, least of all relationships, intimate relationships. It's just not going to happen. You know, Men, make sure what you're saying is right because the feminine exists to challenge the masculine. And if you cannot, you know, any time a woman tests you as to whether or not you know whether or not you're going to buckle before them whether or not you actually have integrity as a person because they will always test you etc are you going to are you going to like be flimsy and you know what you know is not going to be accurate do you think that woman's ever going to trust you do you think that woman's ever going to want you do you think that woman will ever value your thoughts ever like no the answer is no it's not going to happen so you have to take responsibility and be, and just verify, 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 and this, and have that habit, make it habitual of verification. Actually, go to DuckDuckGo.com, type in this search and verify what you know, because at least you don't have to deal with the biased Google crap from Google.com. So, anyway. The second gateway, or that's how, that's what helps you, you know, transition in a healthy, responsible manner into your INTP ego, right? You know, going all the way up through, you know, adolescence and whatnot. Very few TI heroes actually know what's true, especially when they focus so much on material or history books. A lot of what's in these books are nothing more than opinion to begin with. So. Really, the faster you as a TI hero realize that the only thing that you actually really know is the fact that you don't know a damn thing. As soon as you get to that Socratic point of view, you will literally be 
the smartest person on the planet. But it requires a huge amount of humility to do so. You know, it requires a huge amount of responsibility. So think responsibly, right? Be accurate and guarantee that you're accurate. If you're not accurate, that's your fault, not anyone else's fault. Because if you're listening to the wrong people, no, there is no such thing as listening to the wrong people. There is listening to people, but not verifying what they say. Stop blaming them and start taking responsibility, okay? It's, it's, it's a really big deal, guys. No one's going to want you. No one's going to value you. The second gateway, you guys are so afraid of making other people feel bad. It's so easy to guilt an INTP into having sex with you. It's so easy. So, guys, that's technically rape. Just saying. Like, that's rape, okay? Don't be raping people. Don't guilt people into sex. But... If the inferiors can be guilted into sex, they can be guilted into doing just about anything, especially when they're young. And then because of SI child, they end up getting Stockholm Syndrome, because it's like, oh, I've pleased you after you guilted me. That means you want me. That means you value me, right? Don't you guys see how rapey that is? Isn't it kind of interesting that... ENTJs are made for INTPs, but ENTJs are the most rapey of all of the types. Have you guys ever thought of that? Kind of interesting how that works. Don't believe me? Go look at ENTJs out in public. I watched this ENTJ in downtown Sacramento at a Thai restaurant. She was this, with this ISFJ guy. And he, he had to call his friend and fake calling his friend or have his friend call him and like interrupt him to get him away from her because... She was making him so uncomfortable. She was literally begging, begging him to go over to his place and, you know, to screw, basically. And he's like, uh-uh. He's like, are you sure that's a good idea? He's being all informative. This ISFJ, poor guy. But at least his effy parent wasn't going to be guilted into sex, even though she was guilting him. Ridiculous. Guys, you need to defend yourselves against this. And you do this by stop being afraid, Okay. You guys are allowing your fear to get in the way of how you value yourselves. You are allowing other people to determine your worth. When the reality of the situation is, you can determine your own worth if you're actually going out of your way to help people. It's pretty obvious. It's pretty simple. Because TIFE, they're on an axis. If you're helping other people, what business do they have to complain about the help that you are providing them? Have you ever thought of that? What business do they have? You know, getting to a point where it's like, okay, hey, I need to figure this out. I need to, you know, what point? So, gosh, I hope no one calls me because this lecture will be for a waste. Dang. So, you don't, you don't have to be afraid anymore. And you, Why? Because you're helping people. Because the more you help someone, the more intelligent you get. This is why I tell INTPs, you just don't even bother going to university. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of money, at least in Western society. Just don't do it. Because if you focus on helping other people and helping other people accomplish what they want to accomplish, kind of like what uh, um, uh, Steve Wozniak did with Steve Jobs, basically, at that point in time, you would be able to, you know, you'll develop your TI hero even more, and you'll be literally the smartest person walking around. Specifically because you're focusing on the external. You're focusing on helping and supporting others instead of focusing on your own bad self. You know what I'm saying? Quoting my father when I say that. So, understand that. It's an important principle. You have to focus on helping others in order to get over your fear. This will allow you to transition into your ESFJ subconscious. This is also the path that will bring you the most happiness in life. You will not be happy unless you're supporting others in some capacity. I was talking to my INTP car salesman friend recently, and he told me that he was having a huge party at his house for the first time in a long time. And INTPs are amazing cooks, by the way. And he was cooking, and he's been marinating these ribs for like two days. He was super excited to, to cook and, you know, having people over, uh, some women over especially, was super excited about that, and then like, you know, and everyone's going to see his amazing recipe that 
that he created based on all of the tastes and flavors that he's collected in his life with his SI child and really to craft something beautiful, to craft something new like that. That's, that's fantastic. And it's all because he's, you know, supporting his friends and hosting them at his own home. You know, these are people who make him comfortable. These are people that he is loyal to. And he is showing them, you know, appreciation for everything they do in his life. For all the good experiences and shared experiences they give him. And he's giving back. How many of you INTPs out there actually ever really give back? You, you know... You expect other people to give you recognition, but how much recognition do you actually give somebody else? This is something that you know people don't like about you because you have this FI demon where you just come off as this person who doesn't care about anything. Well, it's because you're choosing not to care about anything. What you really need to be focused on is that if they care, then I should care, right? But within reason, of course, because People can care about really dark things like sexual abuse, for example. And then as a result of that, you find yourself participating in something that you would never actually be able to live with yourself and participating in. So you have to watch out, okay? Don't allow yourself to be taken advantage of in that regard. You still have to protect yourself. So you can't be loyal to the wrong thing or the wrong person. But I mean, hey, INTPs, all NTPs are triple systematic. So we get so focused on the best way of doing something that we're not even aware other people are going to screw us. So INTPs, teach yourself the following habit. If there's anything you ever learned from me, this is it. Anytime you have any human interaction with anyone, even if it's your spouse or your, your confidant or your whoever you're intimate with, you have to ask yourself, is this person getting more out of the situation than I am? Yes or no? And if they are, that means by default I am being manipulated by them. And that means your TI hero needs to come out and criticize them. If you do this, this is a way an NTP can protect themselves. I talked about it in the uh, ENTP Cognitive Transitions lecture. I'm talking about it here because this applies to triple systematic types. I had a serious problem. I almost became a victim of a romance con um, a few girlfriends back. And that was a serious issue, you know, or they were trying to con me out of money. And uh, it was insane. But I was triple systematic, and they were taking advantage of that triple systematic approach. It wasn't until actually I met my wife that she informs me that that's not how it is. And then based on that, I was able to pipe some neural pathways through my demon function directly into my introverted sensing so that I became aware of interest-based behavior and people's interests. And I create a system around it and a habit. The system is if, it's a logical system, if they get more out of it than I do, they are manipulating me, right? And that's, that's it. Whether or not that person's aware of it or not. This is how a triple systematic person protects themselves, okay? It's especially important, especially, you know, for, for INTP men. Because INTP men, like, need to be aware of the feminine imperative known as hy hypergamy, right? And because of hypergamy, uh, like, you guys will be taken advantage of so much, you know? These, these, these women online, for example, that are performing these romance cons, etc., like... They target NTPs specifically because of how easy it is, right? Well, if you if you apply this habit, and you know this is a form of self-respect, if you apply this habit in there, and you don't let these people guilt you into becoming loyal to them, or the loyal to the wrong thing, or the wrong person, or the wrong system, then you'll be fine. It is so easy to take advantage of INTPs because they're the biggest doormats of all the types. Even more so than an ESFJ, because at least SI parent will activate and protect themselves. But SI child, it is not going to be an SI parent for a while because ESFJ subconscious is, is underdeveloped, which means you're not going to be able to protect yourself. So you have to protect yourself through force of habit. And this is the habit that you need to utilize to protect yourself, INTPs. Otherwise, you're going to become insanely arrogant. Why? Well, because when you end up getting screwed by people, 
When you're guilted into doing things that you don't want to do, guess what's going to happen, INTPs? You are going to start being feeling bitter because eventually you'll realize that. Eventually you'll realize that you've been had. Eventually you will realize that you were taken advantage of. And then you're going to feel bitter. And then you're going to take it out on them and other people. If you could still take it out on them, they probably already are out of your life by then, such that you don't know if they're ever going to come back, you know. But that's, the, that's, that's reality, okay? And then because of that bitterness, it's going to lead to pride because it's like, oh, this person took advantage of me. They don't value me, you know. And when that happens, what you're going to start doing is that anytime you help somebody, it's always going to have a price. Because in order to protect yourself, what you're going to end up doing is you're still going to allow yourself to be taken advantage of others. You're still going to allow other people to manipulate you, right? But then you're manipulating them. So because you are being manipulated by others, because you allow yourself to be manipulated with your effie inferior, because you're so afraid to make other people feel bad, that you allow yourself to be guilted by people, you are going to manipulate them. You're going to mimic these people. So anytime you help somebody, there's always a price, there's always a hidden cost, and that's where covert contracts come from, where it's like, hey, I'll scratch your back, but you better scratch mine, but I'm not going to let you know that I expect you to scratch my back in return. This is horrible. All crusader types do covert contracts. They do it worse than anyone, but ESFJs and INTPs are the absolute worst. The absolute worst at covert contracting. It's insane, and it's insanely manipulative. I can't stand it. I absolutely cannot stand how manipulative you people can get. Because it's like, hey, you know, I did this good thing, so you have to do this good thing for me. And because, you know, I'm so central to you know, your operation or this business or this family or this church, you know, if you're not going to help me in the way that I'm demanding right now, then I'm going to pull all of my support for out from under you. And it's like akin to pulling out a chair from out from some uh, from someone, you know. And then that person doesn't want that INTP anymore. And the INTP is left trying to figure out, well, why doesn't anyone want me anymore? Why doesn't anyone value me anymore? It's because your help comes with a price. And you people are so manipulative, I can't stand it. Stop covert contracting people and realize you're covert contracting people because you are allowing yourself to be manipulated by other people. And then you get so prideful about it. You get so prideful about how much help you're doing others and what the and the and the, the favors that you're that you're earning from other people and how this guy over here or this girl over here is like this great person and they're gonna do favors for you. Okay? No. That's inappropriate. That's not actually going to happen, okay? That's inappropriate, all right? It's a fantasy. It's a fantasy that you guys tell yourselves. And you guys get so prideful. You know, it's like, hey, look at me. I'm so smart because look at all these people that I help and look at all these favors that I've earned because, you know, I help these people. And it's like, no, no, that's inappropriate. That's not even going to happen, guys. So get over your pride. Realize that you're not actually that great at helping others because you're not practiced, right? It's because you're probably so focused on, you know, going to school, go to college, get a job, you know, following the bouncing ball like everyone else in the world. When the reality of the situation is you should probably focus on helping people for the sake of helping people without expecting something in return unless you tell them what you do expect in return. Because guess what happens when you do that? That's proof that you have self-respect. And when you have self-respect, INTPs, people will respect you, right? Okay? That's how it works. You want to be respected? That's what you got to do. Okay? Of course, INTPs, especially INTP men, are the least respected of all of the types in men. The least respected. So keep that in mind, guys. Keep that in mind. So... Don't let your pride come into play, guys. Don't let your fear lead to pride. Instead, cognitive transition in a way where you're not covert contracting anyone and you are allowing them to... Gosh, I really hope my, my wife doesn't call me um, because then that makes this lecture worthless. Um, but you just don't want to allow these people to guilt you. And remember, like I said, 
whatever human interaction that you have in your life, ask yourselves, are they getting more out of it than I am? And if they are, they are manipulating me. Call them out. And then to prevent that from happening further, whenever you're helping somebody, make sure that you tell them what you expect in return. Or don't. And if you don't tell them what you expect in return, just recognize that you won't get anything in return. Human beings are selfish. There's no such thing as the law of reciprocity. There's no such thing as quid pro quo. Really. There really isn't. Because remember, love cannot be earned. Respect cannot be earned. It is only given. So really, the law of reciprocity and the quid pro quo, while that is kind of a thing, it's, yeah, it is kind of a thing, but it's not, it's only covert. It's not overt. It's not 100% true. Human beings still have to make the choice at the end of the day. Human beings still have to give respect, still have to give love. And if you're an INTP man who's having problems with women, just realize that the woman is not going to do it. Like, no, you can't covert contract her into that, for example. You can't do this in business either. You can't covert contract people. It's BS. You're not going to get anywhere in life. So move on from that, INTPs. Like, seriously, move on, okay? Let go of your pride. Realize that you're not so helpful and you're not so supportive as you think, mostly because you don't value anything to begin with. And realize that you need to value what other people value, not what you value, such that it causes you to be supportive to others and what other people desire and what other people value. And ask them for recognition before you help them. Tell them what recognition you expect. Super important. By the way, INTP men, if you're watching this, read all of the rational male books, like the three volumes, like Crusader men especially. You all need to read uh, the rational male and no more mr nice guy do yourselves a favor and like wake up to the fact that covert contracting women isn't going to get you laid at all or even respected so just move on with your life and like do yourself a favor and wake up like come on guys y you just have to do this I i'm getting really tired of <laughs> like i coach so many intps about this it's it's so ridiculous and and it's like well and you know as a crusader myself, I have to deal with, you know, a lot of, you know, I have to deal with that as well in, in my own life. I've, I've dealt that so many times with all the different sexual relationships that I've had, you know. And I, I mean, I even used to covert contract my ex-wife all the time, you know. And honestly, it's pathetic. So don't do it, guys. Have self-respect. That's the point, right? So the third gate, the third gateway. You guys are so, you guys are so worried about whether or not you're doing enough research you guys don't even actually consider yourselves intelligent. This is literally the Dunning-Kruger effect. The dumb people think they're smart, and the smart people think they're dumb. It's really annoying. And definitely definitely not something that's remotely appropriate. Yeah, there's like a wedding happening over there, and like I'm lecturing behind the wedding. I should probably move on so as to not piss people off. You know what I'm saying? So, anyway... Make sure you guys understand that, like, yes, data and statistics out there, a lot of it is stupid. Yes, there's a lot of bias out there. And I know that sometimes it's like, okay, well, I know this is biased, so why should I read it? Why should I listen to anything that, that this person has to say? Because you have to understand how bias works. Everybody is biased. Like, literally, the whole world is biased. You are biased, especially since you have SI child. Hot damn. But the point is, it's like, because everyone is biased, you have to understand that every single article that you read, there's no such thing as an unbiased article. So what you need to understand is, is that read it. Take the time and have the patience to read everything, the pros and the cons. This is what I tell TE users to do. You know, Check out the pros and the cons. Check out all the different sources. Spend the time to boil the ocean and to understand the topic completely. Recognize that bias is anywhere, and your TI hero through verification should be able to extract the truth out. It's pretty nice. You have the ability to do that. TE users don't. They have to weigh it out and try to like come to a belief or a principle that is close to the truth and hope that it's true. Whereas because you have TI Hero, you can actually come to the truth. And this is why, mixed in with your triple systematic, if you're actually willing to get over your worry about all the research that you would end up doing to get your close to the truth and verify, this means that no one can figure out a better way of doing something than you can, which means you are brilliant, the most brilliant, okay? Such that 
you can cause insane change. You could literally, you could literally invent a portable nuclear power plant. Oh wait, that was actually recently invented, you know. But like, you can, you can find the best way to do this. And this is why NTPs, triple systematic types, are so valuable because we can find the best way to do something and do it better than anyone else. Of course, we can be manipulated and be subject to romance cons in the way that we can, you know. For example, you know. But at the end of the day, that's not. That's not, you know, that's not the entire story. Triple systematic is pretty awesome. We can find the best way to do something. We could build the ultimate system. We could build the ultimate technology. The phone that I'm using right now to record this lecture, it's an iPhone 11 Pro. And guess what? It's, uh, you know, it's, it was created by two people who were triple systematic. Two people who teamed up and used their triple systematics to completely own the system. And now... Their company has absolute market dominance over the entire world, right? And this is something that you as an INTP can accomplish. If you just get over worrying about what other people know, worrying about what other people think, worrying about whether or not you, have, you know enough or you have enough knowledge or whether or not you're smart enough. Oh, my gosh. If I have a, a nickel for every time I hear an INTP like question whether or not they're smart enough, like not only would I be a rich man, I could probably create – the entire empire state building just out of nickels you know what i'm saying nickels and glue you know and that would be like forever you know what i'm saying imagine that thing tumbling down you know but the point is like just understand that you guys are a lot more intelligent than you give credit for just because other people don't value your thoughts just because other people don't listen to you does not mean you're stupid it doesn't mean that Stop believing it. You guys put your beliefs in the wrong things. Again, use your TI hero and verify it's responsible. You know, you get so uncertain about what's really going on out in the world. You get so uncertain about what is being said in the news reports and what's being said in the, the results of a lab or an experiment. Or you get so uncertain about what a history book says. That's fine. It's healthy to have that kind of skepticism, but you can't allow that skepticism to get in the way of you actually knowing the truth. And you're not going to know the truth without verifying anyway, so you may as well do all of the research and research every angle. The NTP, known as Bruce Lee, when he was developing Jeet Kune Do, he started out with Wing Chun Kung Fu. But he studied every single other martial art on the planet and took the best with his T.I., of all those arts and combine them into a new art, the original MMA style known as Jeet Kune Do. And I still maintain that Jeet Kune Do is the most superior form fighting style in the world. Why? Because it's built specifically for street fighting. Everyone's telling me, oh, you know, MMA is better, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, all these things is better. Yeah, but MMA sells rules, bro. Jeet Kune Do, they don't even have a ranking system. There ain't no rules with Jeet Kune Do. Jeet Kune Do, JKD, is what it is, and it's specific to street fighting, okay? Which is why I tell NTPs, in order for you to better develop your self-discipline, maybe you should learn martial arts. And what better martial art to learn than the martial art that was created by Bruce Lee, a fellow NTP, Jeet Kune Do. So get into JKD, guys, seriously. Get into it. I'm probably going to be moving here real soon, and as soon as I move, I'm enrolling into JKD right away um, at the, uh, the local dojo. I'm really excited about that. Sadly, there is no JKD available where I live. Otherwise, uh, you know, it's a bit of a drive to where that one is, and I just I don't have the time for that. Especially since I'd want to go every day, every day for a half a year to really reach mastery, you know, put in the hours and at least reach journeyman level, you know. And then uh, keep going for years to reach mastery so that I could teach it. It's really, really important to me. So, and I definitely want to do that. So anyway, like guys, if you want to be certain in your life, then understand that just because other people think less of you, just because the data and the statistics don't line up, it doesn't mean you're not intelligent. It doesn't mean you're stupid. You're actually brilliant. All of you are brilliant people. You just have to know that, and you just have to do it. You know, engage in your self-discipline. 
force yourself to do things. Get outside of your comfort zone. You'd be way better off, you know? Stop allowing what other people think of you, and just because people think you're stupid, like, it's so funny, you know? They see you drop things, and then they automatically think that you're, they're stupid, and then you believe them. Why do you guys insist on putting your beliefs in the wrong people and the wrong things the wrong systems? Hashtag triple systematic. It's annoying. Stop doing it. Like, seriously, stop doing it. It doesn't benefit you. It doesn't benefit me. It doesn't benefit any NTP out there. It doesn't benefit anyone, okay? Realize that, you know, you guys are your own people. And as long as you're verifying everything, what does it matter? And if, and if you're helping other people, what room do they have to bitch? What room do these people have to bitch? They can't complain. They cannot complain. If you're going out of your way to help them, especially if you're not asking for anything in return, they really can't complain. And if they do complain, get those people out of your life. It's not that hard. That just means they're ungrateful. Stop allowing them to guilt you and to stay sticking around. It's so annoying. Then the final gateway, which you guys can irresponsibly use chaotically, which you need to build neural pathways for using it in a healthy way like the other gateways, hatred versus love. It's also known as the demon function. How many times have you helped somebody but no one gives you appreciation for it that you've literally gone FI demon and it's like, oh, you know, fine. If you're not in the mood to uh, give me recognition or do this for me because you're covert contracting them or whatever, I'm just going to do what I'm in the mood of. Then all of a sudden, you know, 12 hours later after watching porn for so long, you know, and jerking off as much as you do or, or how you, you know, playing video games for 48 hours straight, you know, and then you just binge, 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 binge because I'm in the mood to binge because it's not like anyone values me anyway. Wow. I got to be honest, INTPs, that's what makes you folks pathetic. It really, really makes you pathetic. And I could say that because I, I used to be that way because I was pathetic. Not worthy of respect. And you know what's interesting about that? You blame everybody else for that. But the reality of the situation is it's actually your own damn fault. You're the one that's going out there covert contracting. You're the one that's going out there being loyal to the wrong people and the wrong things. And because of your being loyal to the wrong people and the wrong things, the wrong systems, you're not getting any recognition. You're not getting any appreciation. No one is doing you favors because you never asked. Or you never stated that it was your expectation to begin with. And now you're acting out and getting all bitter and doing these hedonistic, you know, actions or behaviors because you know it's like well why do i even bother i'm just super apathetic and you know i got why bother syndrome no one actually really cares about me they don't care about you because you don't have the self-respect to tell them to their face that they need to care about you after you do something for them after you solve their problem you know they should be paying you or at least taking you out to dinner or something ask them for something in return but your little guilt complex is getting in the way. The reality of the situation is, INTPs, is that you hate people because you allow yourselves to be obligated to the wrong ones, or if you are obligated to the right ones, you are not having enough self-respect to ask for anything in return. It's ridiculous. It's irresponsible. And because of that, you have a hatred of people and because you hate people, you don't allow yourself to interact with anyone. So you just shut yourself up in your cave, you know, your little basement, your little attic or whatever, and shut the entire world out and just be in your own little world, right? Because that's really going to solve the problem, right? That's, just, that's, the, that's the best, right? No, no, it's not going to solve the problem. Not actually, right? It's not. So you're negatively, con you're negatively transitioning into your ISFP shadow, and then based on that, you start creating things and plotting other people's demise, destroying systems. I knew an INTP one time who was so unappreciated at his job that he created a logic bomb that destroyed the entire company. And I got a call at 4 in the morning to try to go save that company, basically. I did. Behringer Music Group exists partly because of the work that I did in answering that call as the only VMware engineer within uh, driving distance to come to their data center and save them. Well, everything just kind of exploded. And all because of that little logic bomb, 
All because of that little logic bomb. Wahoo. Because of that disgruntled employee, right? At least that's what I was told happened. Nah, that's really secondhand information, by the way. But, you know, I remember being on the conference call with Uli Berenger and then watching him fire people. Uh, he just, like, it's insane. It's only my first experience seeing a CEO of a company just, like, get mad at somebody and firing them on the spot. You know, I, it's, just, it's just ridiculous. So, hi, beauty. I'm almost done with this one. <laughs> Railgun's taking the dog out right now. So. Anyway, thank you for not calling me because I would have lost the lecture. <laughs> and that would have that would have sucked. I'm almost finished. You wanna walk with me? Okay. Hi hi puppy, Mr. Muddy Dog. Oh my goodness. <laughs> anyway, so yeah guys, like seriously, don't realize that, you know, if you hate people it's probably because it's you, it's not actually other people. Stop trying to like blame everybody. You know, just because you help somebody and they don't appreciate it, it's usually because you're lacking in self-respect or you're not actually stating your expectations of them to appreciating you to begin with. They're just taking advantage of you because you're allowing them, and then you're getting bitter for it. And then your FID even comes out and you make really bad decisions based on your mood, okay? And you're blaming everybody else while trying to avoid blaming the person that needs to be blamed, and that's you. Take some responsibility and realize that's what's actually happening. What business does anyone have getting upset at you if you're helping them anyway, okay? Why do you guys walk around thinking that no one values your thoughts? That's not the reality. That's not how the world works, okay? So understand that, guys. If you want to become a loving person as an INTP, make sure that you go back to all those people that you covert contracted and go apologize to them. Take responsibility. You know, it's kind of what Jesus said. It's like, you know... Um, you know, love your enemies, and actions of love towards your enemies is like heaping burning coals on your heads. If you're going to these people that you consider your enemies and apologizing to them and taking responsibility for the fact that you are manipulating them and covert contracting them and holding bitterness over them and apologizing for it, they may actually take responsibility. They may actually realize that they did something wrong. Who knows? Or they won't. But either way, it's no longer on you. And this will allow you to love other people instead of just focusing on your demonic self-love through F.I. Demon, which just leaves you in stuck in limbo in your life, such that no one wants you and no one thinks you're valuable. No one values what you say. And that's just the reality of the situation. You want to have a better life? Well, you need to develop these neural pathways. Develop your cognitive gateways so that you can have better behaviors instead of, like, in the situation where, you know, you're stuck because... You put yourself in this prison. Just like it says in Star Trek Picard, which I'm sure most INTPs are very well versed in, um, a promise is a prison. Make sure that you're committing the right things. And if you commit, make sure that you're getting the same out of it as they are. Or else you will be miserable for the rest of your life. If you found this lecture useful, helpful, educational, enlightening, please subscribe to the channel here on YouTube. Also leave a like and also hit the little bell thing so when you can see that I'm going live, etc. If you have any questions about INTPs, leave it in the comments below. I hope this lecture was valuable for you and I hope the sound was okay too. Uh, I uh, did adjust the sound gain for this one so I hope it's better. It doesn't seem like the decibels are going too high. It's around like, it says minus 25, I think. 23 average, 20, yeah, it's like a 23 average as far as I can tell. Hopefully this works. So... Anyway, folks, uh, with that being said, I'll see you guys tonight.